Now we're considering basic RTL constructs. Let's take a look at a variety of counter structures. First, let's begin with a very simple one. This is a free running up counter. That is, on each clock cycle, the register C gets filled with one more, that is C plus one. So in this case, plus symbol actually means mathematical addition. We can use an operator that adds one to whatever is presently in the register C. And then it applies that to the input of the C register. In LabVIEW, this is very straightforward. We use a feedback node for the register C, and then we use the uh, increment node, that is the plus one, as the operator to increment C by one. Here I'm initializing the register to zero. Suppose we want to go in the other direction and form a down counter. Well, we simply subtract one on each clock cycle. And there is a similar node in LabVIEW that does the decrement. All right, supposing we wanted to decrease by some variable uh, decrement instead of always by one. So in this case, I can change this operator out to a simple subtraction. And what we'd like to do is form C minus the decrement. Now this operator takes the two inputs and it's a little ambiguous as to whether or not we're doing C minus decrement or decre minus, decrement minus C. So inside the operator, we can put down local variables, if you will, basically just parameters to keep things straight here. And to really make this work out properly, I need to show that this is what I mean by A, and this signal is what I mean by B. Therefore, the operator calculates A minus B. All right, let's consider a counter that can go either direction on request. Free running simply means that it is either counting up or counting down on each clock cycle. Now the register transfer statement associated with up counting looks like D gets D plus one. Down counting would be D gets D minus one. We need a condition on each of these statements to determine which statement is actually being used. I'll structure this by imagining that we've got a signal called count down that is a Boolean type signal or a single bit signal. So when count down is active, we pick the bottom statement when it is inactive, we pick the top statement. We can write this using the ternary assignment technique. This is syntax borrowed from C language and also Verilog language. And that says that we evaluate the expression countdown. If it's a one, then we pick D minus one. Otherwise we pick D plus one. And that's the value that gets fed to D. Now in lab view, we can consider the feedback node as our register. The data selector picks whether or not we have minus one applied or plus one applied to the value that's presently in D. It then passes that to the input of our register. Let's extend this a little bit and say that we needed to have an enable signal as well. That is, instead of making it free running, it will only be able to count up or down when the enable signal is active. Well, that means we need to introduce a third statement that says D simply gets fed with its, itself, and that will hold the present value. So that holding occurs when the enable is inactive, but when enable is active, then we consider what's going on with the countdown signal. So 
so that the period up there incidentally is the boolean and operation so again we can write this a little more compactly as d gets we check enable is enable active if yes then we consider countdown we say is countdown active if yes we should use the value d minus one otherwise we should use d plus one so that whole thing then is the true condition on our test of enable well we would say otherwise if enable is inactive then d is supposed to get filled with whatever is in d right now Now in LabVIEW, it's essentially the same as the structure we were just looking at. I've added an additional selector or two to one mux here that operates from the enable count input. We see that this essentially is our higher priority signal or this is the higher priority mux because it is closest to the register. So we see that if enable is false, it simply picks whatever is in D and that's the end of the story. All the rest of the circuit structure gets ignored whenever enable count is false. Well, let's extend this just a little bit more. Let's consider all of these behaviors and then add the ability to load in a new value on demand. So again, all of these pieces we've already discussed, so I'm adding an additional mux, if you will, and this operates from load value. And so that has the ability to send in a new value directly into the register. And I want this to be the highest priority input, so that way I can load a new value regardless of any other activity on the inputs. All right, let's take a look at the VI called basic RTL constructs. And this implements all of these counters that we've discussed so far. All of these structures are contained inside a while loop, and that's why we see the values either increasing or decreasing right now. That's the free running counters. Here I have one that's based on a variable in increment. Increment is zero at the moment. That's why the counter appears not to be doing anything. Although in fact, it is, uh, the register is sampling its inputs every clock cycle. So as soon as I give this a non-zero increment, we see that the counter starts operating just fine. All right, free running up, up down counter, presently counting in the upwards direction. If I enable the count down signal, that invokes the decrement node on the LabVIEW diagram. And yeah, we see it starts counting down. Here's our version of the up-down counter with the enable. We see that nothing is happening since the enable is not active. So right now we're simply feeding back the existing value. When it's enabled, then we start to see the count operation. And of course we can manipulate the direction as needed. Here's the version that adds the ability to load in new value. Let's put a non-zero value right there. And again, until we actually enable that load value We'll just get the normal operation. This one's designed to count down uh, unless the count up signal is active. All right now we're counting in the uppers direction. As soon as that one goes active, the value that's a new value gets fed into the register and everything essentially ceases because the load value signal is the highest priority input. 